has been a week of history here at DAC 2018. First amongst which we have an SEA grand finalist in a major. We also have a Chinese team trying to win their first major outside of the international. And of course now LGD have broken a long streak of defeat against Mineski. It was 0-6 and six before they headed into game one of the grand final. That one's gone by the wayside as well. They lead by 1-0 to zero in the best of five as we head towards the second draft. Our panel are back with us once more to break things down and look ahead to that second game. And imagine that Mineski have got a few questions to answer as they head into this second draft, Kyle. I believe so. I think that the Venom last pick caught him off guard, and I don't think... felt like... I don't want to say they got too fancy, but it did feels get, they, like... They did get a bit cute, though, didn't they, with that first draft? Yeah, it get, it's more... They, they got more than what they expected, yeah. and I've fallen victim to that, too, in drafts, where you pick something you think is really good, and then another thing you think is really good, and then you're at your last pick, and you're like, wait, what... Crap, what brings this all together? And uh, it was, certainly was an Avenge, and it's the second time we've seen a late pick Venge that seems to result in just a total outdraft at this mm, tournament. Indeed. Uh, LGD have picked first uh, first pick for this second game, and Maneski have chosen Radiant. Yep. Seems to be the priority is first pick, followed by Radiant. Yep. We had some teams choosing side earlier, but I think first pick advantage just seems to be too great to really pass up. Yeah, The only team that have deviated from that, funnily enough, were LGD, mm -hmm. who had a little run where they decided that they yep. were going to be dire every game. Yeah. Uh, but that seems to have come to an end as well. I think Radiant just has uh, better ward spots. It's easier pr to protect your jungle. And um, it's really, I think, like that triple... The Radiant top shrine area seems yep. near impossible for Dire to ever invade, and you can play around that area for Roche very yep. effectively as well. Here we go then, draft number two. Uh, Jack, thoughts? Something different? Uh, if you're Mineski, I think if you're LGD, uh, you either... More of the same, right? Yeah, you either want to get rid of or take the Underlords, probably very high priority hero. Mm. Um, don't, don't get cheesed out in the draft. Um, yep. Just... Yeah, keep playing as they have been. Yeah, I we should the, mention that, shouldn't we? There mm. is the opportunity for some slightly cheesier stuff from Mineski. They, they, they can too. play the Brood, Ten they can play the Huskar. I think that it's just don't get out drafted. If you look at that remaining. game, if I'm 71, I'd just say my bad, guys, because you first pick Death Prophet and they immediately go AA tiny. I, you're, you're already in a hole. And I think that that is one of those Radiant counters that's just been figured out, and it's at the point. Oh, oh, you know, oh. I kind of... Man... Did I not say this hero would climb the ranks? I didn't know if it would make it all the way to just overall first pick, but I'm really not surprised. What what would you actually do to an Underlord? I, I think you go Rubik plus one into this, but I'm not sure if they'd be confident early picking Rubik like that. Ten mm. seconds remaining. Bat Rider? I personally like Bat Rider against uh, You can't open it with it, though. Five you can't. Yeah. I mean, Tiny's safe. I just feel like Underlord's a great matchup for that. Yeah, Tiny's okay. It's not... Not too great, like like you mentioned, not too great against Underlord, but mm -hmm. not bad either. See, I don't know. The, these teams have a different style. Like Ten I personally remaining. place more weight on hard countering enemy openers. Five it's part of the reason remaining. I was so sad that the AA was left when there's a Death Prophet first picked. LGD and if you're playing against an LGD first pick Underlord, ah, I, I, I don't like this for two reasons. One, I don't actually think these heroes are very good against Underlord. He's a natural hood and pipe buyer, so eventually he'll just negate AA's damage output. Yeah, you can outlane him, but AA Tiny can outlane pretty much anything. And in addition, you're just stealing the opener that LGD just Ten used against you remaining. after having, what, a full day and a BO3 watching them Five to prepare, and your answer to Underlord mm. is just AA Tiny? Like, it... Yeah, yeah, I know what you fan. mean. I know what you mean. It's it's more like oh shit, what happened last mm -hmm. game? They did this and it worked, and we don't un we don't fully oh, understand why. We we try to understand it during the break. Well, they might have more of a plan because they banned it during the first game draft, right? So I assume they they accounted for yeah. situations where they would be playing against it too. Yeah, it's just the thing is in the previous draft they had Oracle Willow supports, right? And then playing against a tiny, you don't do a damn thing to tiny. He slaughters you. This disruptor underlord, you're like the go-to. To play against a tiny because you just kinetic field him and trap him in the pit. Radiant he's not able back. to status resist his way out of anything, and he's going to take tons of damage. And I already favor LG's opener, like, all, like significantly. I feel like they're already in a point where their draft is eighty twenty, and we haven't even seen the last three heroes. Relax, bro. Three more heroes. Relax, man. I just, <laughs> I don't know, man. Five seconds <sighs> remaining. Void ban. I mean, that's the typical 
combination with Underlord that you mm. fav we, we favor a lot three in the panel. It free just, free free initiation for the fire storm. It's, it's even worse because LGD is first pick, right? So they get to if if they already have favorable matchups, they're gonna have tons of versatility with these picks. They can do essentially whatever they want. I could see them going for a Venomancer again, fourth pick. I think that hero is super undervalued and very strong here. Mushi can play that hero too. Mm -hmm. Venom AA. Do what they did last game. Yeah, I mean, it was something Liquid ran at TI7 as well. It fell off a bit. I saw Optic pick it a couple times in qualifiers and at this event. Um, I think it's certainly one of the stronger hero uh, combinations in the game just because of how much raw damage you can output. And, and I'll be honest, how easy it is to hit your spells. Yeah, they've only lost one game with the Underlord of the five they've played so far at DAC. Yeah, and that was to Virtus Pro earlier today. There's uh, another counter that they're kind of setting up for. It feels like they're they're banning heroes that are good against something like a sniper um, against the Underlord. So you don't have a whole lot of gap close right now. And uh, you, you can... Radiant yeah, I think it's seen as a hero that does well against it, and you can kind of protect his vulnerabilities too. If you're not able to draft safe. I would really like it if Mineski puts this Tiny on support. I think that's one of the best things to deal with an Underlord in the laning phase as well, because you just grab a tree and zone him really heavily, and then later on you can toss him back. And I think it's super effective to just zone him out. You don't really want to be playing core tiny in this game, I don't feel. If you toss him around, it can counter the Uber as well. If there is a Razor in the pool, something we haven't seen recently, but could be solid for both teams. I think it'd be more likely Mineski takes it, and if they do, I think it would be this pick. Uh, their other option is to just settle on a support, but like I said, I think that four tiny has to be attractive, but I'm just not sure if that's something they're willing to run. Taking a lot of time with this decision, though. It's it's a tough one because there's like yeah. too many factors to. Yeah, this is this is the most important pick, a second yeah. pick. They have to decide what is the rest of the direction of the draft with this mm -hmm. pick here. Yep, exactly. This is what actually locks you in. Like, do we keep, do you pick a core one early and leave some versatility? Naga Siren. All right, so they're committing to the tiny core. Naga picked up as a bit of a denial to LGD, I suppose, but I don't know if they're even thinking about that hero. Very weak against the Underlord, and personally, I think it's weak against Disruptor too because he just finds you at some point. You love having an Underlord against Naga because you just walk mm. in. You don't care about Song. I think I'm seeing something like they are going to run Five some A Naga, and Mushi will be in the tri lane. And mm -hmm. maybe a Timber Saw against an Underlord to to win that yeah. matchup, to try to win that matchup. But I, think I, I, but I, I personally not sure about that matchup because I, I know Underlord does okay before yeah. Timber is level 6. I think, you'd li I think they fourth pick Luna here. Have this unbeatable tri lane and it mm. sets them up to last pick either an Ice Hero or a Nana Hero. But should you definitely should pick be your, your one. Yeah, it should be Ice Hero. Yeah. Just for a matchup to win the Underlord. Yeah. It's like Luna or Gyro, but I just think Luna's better against this combination of heroes. And it's just easier to snowball with. Team pick. Shadow, Shadow Fiend. Fiend. I like that pick a lot. I love SF Underlord. So much damage output. So much team fight. So much, yeah, exactly. And the damage reduction, the mm. Atrophy Aura on top of the SF Ultimate. Any hero Mineski picks here, uh, be it Gyro, be it Luna, you know, whatever finishes their draft, if they walk in and SF ults, even through BKB, their damage is going to be reduced, not just by Atrophy, which is going to be up to, mm -hmm. I believe, 40%. 40%. SF is another 50%, and all of a sudden, it doesn't matter whether you have a 10-second BKB. For most of the fight, you're just tickling. They go with the Gyro, and I'm just, man, how many times have we seen Gyro against Underlord? This just seems like a... A grim situation. Not sure quite what mm. LGD wants to go for here. They just need some sort of setup stun. Lane. Uh, they need Tusk is lane. in the pool. The only way Minasuke is going to be able to you know, win mm -hmm. this game is like you snowball through the lanes, you kill Roshan, yeah. then you try to finish Five the game with the second Rosh. They have to lean more towards the winning the game by snowballing out of the lane. And mm. LGD just needs to survive the lane basically yeah. pretty much right now. And you just, you just pick Tusk here. I've seen FY just take over games on this hero. There's nothing else that really matches the pure save potential. And it's really nice, especially mm. against the, t the only... Um, Clockwork? You, you, Clockwork is no. good against three of their heroes. And yeah, they have Clockwork SF. But Cl uh, you're right. Okay, I'll give you... Just because there's an SF, I, I think it's possible. I, I believe that's probably the debate. Because <laughs> you, you're taking <laughs> FY's hero, and it's Clock or Tusk. And it's just like, hey, do we want the best Tusk player in the world on Tusk? Or yeah, do we just give yeah, maybe 12 I guess souls? I you're right. Tusk, Tusk is just... Like overall, I think much better. Yeah. 
So even, she, you can snow out a song, right? Mm-hmm. They don't have a instant follow up, and it even functions before the meteor hammer would go off if you were to get one. So you just you just save immediately. I don't. That's just the, the only the only argument is it's good against the naga. It's good against the air. It's good against the gyro. That that will only be a, a mm. dis, the argument there. It's also so good with disruptor and underlord, right? Mm. It just you have so many methods of controlling choke points. I would like Mineski to go another direction with their last pick. Mm-hmm. I think it was something that combos better with the mm-hmm. AA and mm-hmm. gives them that front line. So something like a CK or Wraith King like to see as their last pick. I think you actually go the opposite direction. I think you have to be buying a BKB on the gyro. Have him play maybe even this Ags build. Just run in, make shit happen with the tiny. I think you last pick a Tinker. You, Tinker is like my go-to counter to SF Underlord. I could see TA, but the problem is it's too single target. You're going to end up just feeding. And you want something more to synergize with the Naga and a win condition. This last pick has to be a win condition. CK gets utterly destroyed by Underlord and SF. It's the same with Wraith King. That's the concern. You actually just don't have the survivability or the damage output. They run you over and have BKBs, and you're still working on like an armlet, and you're just not really a threat yet. They need magical damage output. They need raw damage. They have an AA. They have the amplification. They need something that will just pump mm. damage into the fights. So for LGD, they just need they need like a laner, good laner, um, Juggernaut, but that's an AA. Mm. But Juggernaut could. I, I think Juggernaut maybe can hold the lane though. Mm. Like Juggernaut disruptor Tus. I I could see them going for like a life stealer too. But life I think. Ban. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, last ban. I I like the jug as you said. I could see maybe a troll. I actually think troll might be the best bet just because he can. He's a ranged hero for the most part, and it's just incredible synergy with SF Underlord. Another BKB hero. You really want a BKB hero. That's the key timing for LGD. Radiant team pick. And Mineski, you got a tinker. I don't know what else saves your draft here. You need blind. You need magic damage. You need something that actually wins you the game against these heroes, and I am not seeing anything else. Mm, Magnus? Ten seconds. <sighs> Gives them team fight. I mean, maybe they core the Naga or something, but I just don't. I am not a believer in core Naga. You need it. It's got to be a Nana hero, I think. Put ice on the tiny. If they want to core this tiny, and the, if the, the tiny Jower cores, right? How are they? How do they? win a fight ever into BKBs. Like, they just get wrecked. And they don't have a uh, wave clear either. Like, AA, Naga, Tiny, mm. not I, as optimal. I think they just all in the lane and just pick the Timber. Like, seriously. <laughs> Dude, timber, Timber's just going to yeah, die the SSF, a, though. What if it's just a Viper? It's possible, but then LG just out farms and they just still buy BKBs. It's not bad, but I feel like they don't have enough for maybe's SF. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you were right. Not bad. Ah, it gives at least it gives them a win condition. You know, mm. it's also it does deal with the BKBs I was mm. harping on for quite some time. They always have an answer now, and if they land this, <laughs> <what's> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was close. If it had been Tinker, I would have deserved that moniker. But thank you, production. The the thing about it is. They have an answer now at the very least. They have a win condition, and they have the ability to amplify the damage output of the gyro and the tiny. So it's like, it's something. I'm glad it wasn't just, you know, a throwaway. But I don't know. What do you think? Okay, let's go down the line, uh, get some predictions. Uh, Kyle, which way? I don't want to go first. Okay, Jack, which way? I think it is a hero that struggles in lane, though. I, I, I don't like this last pick, and uh, I'm going to go with LGD this game. Okay, Winter? <sighs> Need to hurry. I'll just stick with Minaski. Okay. Uh, oh, oh. Man. 50 50 for me. I got to go with LGD. Okay. We only have one on screen, but that's fine. We've had our, uh, we've had our predictions, and we're ready to rock and roll in game number two. So let's head back to the arena. Thank you, Red Eye. Yes, game two now between LGD and Mineski. I'm Odie Pixel. I'm here with Fogged, and we've got some exciting picks. We've got a Magnus. A Ice 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 Magnus, a hero that, as of recent, has not been popular at all. It's been a very hard hero to make huh. work. But if anyone's ever going to be able to do it, Ice Ice Ice, he's, he's certainly the player to, to, you know, to put on that hero. We saw, what, two or three of them? Oh, no, let's, let me see that win rate. I, I, I'm pretty it can't sure be great it, for this. I think this it was, oh. 
What's the win rate like right. for Mag? It says on this one, but I remember too, because I remember okay. Mad, Mad played it twice, right? Oh, yeah, the OG and it Magnus. It lost twice, oh. as far as I remember. Let's see if Vice can do it better than Mad. So we'll yeah. see what he can make happen. Different lane, of course, but we'll see, ladies and gentlemen. Game two, Maneski LGD. Ice, 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 Magnus, is and, it going to blow us away? And LGD's got what? This is four of the same heroes that they played earlier today, right? I believe the so. The Troll, Disruptor, Tusk, Troll, and Underlord? Yeah, Troll, Disruptor, Tusk, definitely, I remember. Yeah. And I would not be surprised if there was an Underlord uh, slid into that game earlier. That was, the, that was the play, right? That was the rift that they used. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. It was indeed. This was, you're absolutely right. So we'll see if they can do it again, LGD. Obviously, a lineup that they are very confident with. Mm hmm. And uh, as sort of the, the panel was uh, saying, a lineup that's just it's going to be potentially a little easier to execute. Yeah. A lot of pressure on Ice 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 this game on his Magnus to make big things happen on a hero that can be very hard to make, make stuff happen. Yeah, I think it's majority. I think the reason they probably picked it is like the wave clear so they can slow down the push and also to get that BKB piercing disable so that the gyro can actually do a lot. But this is a gyro versus Underlord. I think we've seen this matchup time and time and time again. There's so much damage reduction coming out from LGD's lineup. I'm really glad that Kyle actually brought up the Requiem from SF. I think that could put in a big factor that uh, damage reduction between that and the Underlord. And now FY is also playing the Tusk, so they've got they've got all their signature stuff. Ame as well on the troll. See some brilliant performances from FY this LAN and specifically on his Tusk multiple times. See how the lanes do settle here at the moment. Once again, jabs and ice. Keeping their heads up towards the top lane. Both teams doing exactly the same thing on their off lane, just pulling the wave right at the start. But starting a full aggro try at the beginning from Ineski. See how much and how well Arme can deal with this pressure. Early on on his trial warlord. Yeah, I'm mostly going to be watching this mid lane to see how Somnus can do versus the tiny base damage at the start, because he's getting no help. Bottom lane, FY. Bottom. So let's get the shards onto Mushi, but Mushi actually turning and fighting back when Ninja Boogie brings FY incredibly low there. He also taking quite a fair bit of damage himself. Jabs. Trying to block the pole camp. That's why he's taking that extra damage. So both sides. It's not warded blocked. Now it is actually. So Mineski, they ward, put a sentry down, and also the bottom lane is blocked by LGD. So they want to. We've been seeing that so much, right? These dual lanes come out, block the pull, don't let them reset the lane. Gets the D ward this time though. Ninja Boogie did his homework because I do believe LGD used that ward in previous games. Bottom. Fire giving quite a chase down onto Mushi, but now Mineski, they'll be ready with a return fire. Rocket Bra, Jam Missile heading the way of FY. Jabs trying to chase and looking for that first blood. Should be able to find it, and they do. Mineski, claim first blood here as Jabs just now TP down to the bottom lane to form this try lane and make sure that Maneski can find these opportunities to get the kills. Yeah, Ice 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 already got enough top by getting that initial pull wave. He's actually last hitting 7-1. and one. And you see mid lane, so you mentioned that, sh that Tiny versus Shadow Fiend, 9-6 and six to 4-0 of Somnus at the moment, to be expected. Why? I want to make sure that he can grab the banter rooms for himself, but it's not going to happen. Jabs. Able to secure the radiant side one. Gallus. The wraparound gets a few punches in onto Ninja Boogie. Not AA back, but indeed we'll see how Somnus recovers from this mid lane. As, as you say, it's, it is expected to be very tough. Especially when you get zero help, because they're focusing on the two side lanes so much. So the important thing in this Mineski tri lane is since they don't have their pull, or they do have their pull now available, is get the pulls off and also get these, try to get any kills. Uh, possible, so they can keep up in levels in particular. Because when you're playing with Tri versus a dual lane, you're starting, you're gonna start getting limited in that if you don't pick those kills up and get those pulls. Seeing now in the the mid, Somnus now is actually able to get some of those early CS. So has now got at least the nine souls. Yep. And contest a little bit better the CS against Moon's Tiny. Not for the straight Aquila. Get that extra mana regen going so he can actually be able to get those shadow rays and jabs. Gonna zone FY away. Having those early boots and wind lace. It's pretty speedy. Literally getting a lot of damage onto FY. Somnus has to sort of head over to make sure that FY can be unable to back off to safety bottom lane Chalice. again. Have to make the attempt here. They've got the vortex buffing up the magical damage. Chilling touch as well. Chalice taking heavy damage here with the wraparound from Jap. There's no escape for the Underlord. Maneski. Another kill on this bottom lane, the tri-lane working to full effect. That was like 
mainly because of what Jabs did there. He chased FY all the way out of the lane, all the way through the river, and then because he's so speedy, seeing that 390 movement speed, can make that quick rotation over. But during all this, Troll is full free farming top. Ice 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 is at least level 3, though. He's got a bottle, boots too. Got a little bit of CS from that top lane. But this is quite charts. comparable to the Troll and an E mid. The trap is set. FY comes in with a rotation. Moon will turn with the Avalanche onto two. And Skewer oh it back Moon. He's going to get the kill. Ice 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 with the Skewer play. Coming in to save the day. Allows Moon to survive. And LGD lose both FY and Somnus. Mm. They, they did not expect Ice 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 to come in like that. No, definitely not. In majority of heroes, you would die to that triple raise. But look at Tiny. 3.3 .3 strength gain per level, 1,200 HP with a wand. He doesn't care. Well, and a soul ring, too. We'll give him the soul ring extra strength as well. I mean, Fred, not getting that kill on the tiny. It, it looked like a surefire easy kill. Yeah. But that was not the case. FY looking to punish this mid. Smoked up instantly. Gets a ward down. Jabs will as well place one. Jabs as was in vision, so that one could get dewarded yeah. quickly by LGD. Wi Fi can find with the remainder of the smoke. As you say, the warding was the primary target. A kill would be nice as well. So, what happened last time they tried for, for Moon? It's actually pretty crazy how much health that hero has. Even though you're like zero armor. Like, look at Mag. I'm sure he's level four, but this, Ma this tiny was this level again. five. And he's getting like well over a thousand. Look, he's in. One, two. I mean, look, this this six, looks like one, a dead tiny. Six, seven, one, fairy fire. And then ice there. Just that extra bit of space there, screwing FY away so he couldn't get the extra right clicks in, needed to bring down Moon. But as as you mentioned, top lane is the certainly looking scary in the sense that Arme, he's... Yeah, I don't think he's missed a creep. Five minutes, 43 seconds in, 35 for 21. The same to be said for Mushi Mushi's Shara, doing great too, Very, yeah. very close behind down bottom. 31 for 21, and has, of course, himself been involved with getting those kills in that safe lane. Yeah, and is that, that's that D ward we were talking about. They got the initial ward first. So a very important thing as support players is getting that four, getting the four-minute ward down. Getting the nighttime ward is super important to watch the to watch where the opposing supports are going to be placing theirs. And Ninja Boogie, with that extra movement speed from the Vortex, gets the invis rune from Chalice. Only a promising start in terms of kills for Maneski this game, but... Say LGD's farm on the cause. Jabs. I'll be able to match. Why not really with uh, enough damage and control to cause too many issues for the Naga Siren? Our support level's doing all level three. X Nova's been pretty much consistently pulling, saving skill points as well in case he wants to make rotations for those glimpse levels and kinetics. We tend to see 1 1 1 a lot of the time. And Ice Ice Ice, by the looks of it, the old flame build, doesn't matter what yeah. hero you're playing, you pick you it up this side. Yeah. And he used to go Dominator even before it was cool on the mag. This is true. That, especially when you see those sweet little players with like the Centaur, having that RP into the stun. Lots of ways to, to play around very nicely with the, the active capabilities. Ooh, they're not going to get the OBS. They'll be able to get the Sentry, but I'm pretty sure they know that OBS is there as well, because that D ward coming earlier. Somnus now in that mid lane actually uh, managing to lead the CS against the Tiny, of course, at this stage with the, the levels in the rays stacking up as well as mass souls collected. X Nova wants to keep tabs on Ice 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 into that rotation mid that he had earlier and also to build the sap that experience from the neutral camps. Puts a ward down, ward down, also blocks the camp to make sure that Ice 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 has to play a little bit more consistently in the lane. And now Ice. Run in with the wrap round, he will pop the mango and the skewer, trying to keep himself away, and he should just be fine. Thunder Strike, not enough to finish him off. He keeps himself out of range of the glimpse. Jabs comes in with the root. Mushi did try and TP in to help, but he got immediately glimpsed back by X Nova. Maybe now, though, getting chased out by Mushi. Oh, the level four barrage. FY's in there with the snowball. Pulls him away. Mushi. Is he going to be able to find this with the flag? The flag? Is it enough? It's it enough. is. It's enough. He's got it. Mushi! Lane Ward <laughs> giving him the vision for the flag to hit. Top lane, Ice 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 back into the, into the action. But Arme and Nova, they're looking for him. Ice 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 goes for the steward, but Arme's got the kill. Instantly TP's out as soon as he sees a Tiny coming in and he'll make it away. There's a hasted Tiny though, X Nova. Hey. Oh, he's got to hide. Oh, oh, oh. Hide and seek professional hit. 
as X Nova well and truly jukes out the tiny. That was that was boss. Very sweet plays coming out from both sides here. And Pretty nine even. minutes in, it, it really is. You look across the map, you've got Mushi and Arme in a beautiful place at the top, both safe laners. Look at Somnus now, though. He's got a juicy stack up top as the Shadow Fiend. That should uh, pretty much put him back level with the with the Moon Tiny. Yeah, we're starting to get close. a bit ahead. Gets those nice levels, too. It was Ice 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 who stacked that, though, so it wasn't a support who's actually going to get the gold from that SF cleaning it. Now, S X uh, they give X Nova actually this top lane, and Ame's going to jungle a bit more. Since he's got the mask, or the Morbid Mask and Treads, he can do Ancients and whatnot. Getting this disrupted level 6 will make them able to put more pressure on the map with the rotations. We'll come forward to Looks to try and force Moon out of the lane. Mushi TP's toward top. Wants to set something up here. He does get in range of the ward, and they're pinging it out. They know that that camp is blocked, so... See, Somnus is already going to start backing away. This gives a lot of space to Chalice now, who is farming jungle for the most part. Now he's back to the lane. Level 6, getting close to level 7, getting close and close to those Dominators, as we are mentioning, for those offlaners. Oh, my down here. They could look to put some pressure onto this tier 1 tower. Yep. Only the AA at the moment hanging around, looking to soak up some of that XP Ninja Boogie. Get him out. Himself Minuski. towards the level six. They're making the long smoke rotation down. TP coming through from Moon on the front of it all, and that will cause Chalice to back away. Same for Arme as they head up the lane. Can they find any sort of grab Mineski? Japs may find Chalice, and he does indeed. Roots there. And they should have the magical to bring down this Underlord, and they do. Another kill for Mushi's Gyro. Quick movements around the map. It's 3 0 1. Having a very strong impact on the game so far, thanks to that very nice lane that was set up for him. She uh, definitely able to play more of the tempo that Maneski needed him to in comparison to what we saw in game one. Yeah. Jabs. Scouts out Ame. Jabs. Ame. Yeah, he's just going to run this one down. Jabs. They don't have a bash hitting. There's more TPs coming in. If they can find some of the catch out for a shot, and if I try, Range is not quite there. It's always going to be a hard one. Gabs will be able to get himself away from what was four members of LGD coming down to see if they could get a catch. They've got the level six now on X Nova with that disruptor. Gives them a lot more catch, like we were mentioning. And Ninja Boogie, just about level six, too. They give him that mid lane with Moon making the rotations down. You see both, you see this a lot now from these teams, especially that are in like the top three, top four of this tournament. They've been really prioritizing getting those level six on the supports and just moving their cores around constantly. Just the meta. All about those aggressive moves early on. So the uh, the build for Somnus this game as well. The the he is going for the yeah. Eagles. Do you like that this game? This looks like he's trying to be like the, the hero that moves around and gets kills while the troll warlord just farms around farms mostly on the map. He, I think he knows also that Gyro's not gonna get BKB for a while, so he can go for those big explosive plays. Your Scepter as well can be uh, incredibly strong against uh, a Magnus lineup if you have that vision. So you can yeah. get that sort of precast, make it very hard for him to get a Blink RP without being thrown up into the skies. His Blink's going to be pretty slow. And Mushi now actually getting grabbed up here, X Nova, off Try. the mark. Well, looks a glimpse him back in, but indeed Mushi is going to be able to keep himself out of the Static Storm, not the combo that LGD needed. Now Ame with the DD, with our AA Blast put on him, he actually is able to commit in. He does get the wraparound kill. Can they get more out of this, Japs? Trying to run. D won't be able to quite get the further control, but still, big pickup there for LGD. Finding Mushi's Gyro, getting the space for Arme and Chalice to take this tier one tower. And those sort of movements, keeping Arme just that bit ahead of Mushi this game on his Troll Warlord. Leads the net worth, 7k. On ice, Arme ice, ice. Wants to make something happen top. Chalice instantly ripped away, and A Blast was coming, so smart of him to do so. Now, Ice Ice has put a lot of pressure onto this tower, though, with this dominated creep, who he's also empowering, of course. Bit of pressure here from Ice. And will not be answered at all. LGD. Helps him on his funds towards the blink after the helm. Mushi recognizes how much 
magical damage and catch they're going to actually get on LGD in the next few moments. So he's actually prioritizing just rushing that BKB right after the Yasha. He wants to act as like, I guess he wants to act as kind of like a frontliner too, so that the Tiny and the, uh, the Magnus can get those initiations off constantly. It's going to slow his farm down though. Maneski, with this ward, they, they know that LGD's down here. Looking to find the Ice Blast, but they won't find the connection. The jump in from Moon will get the job done, though, on the Disruptor. X Nova's gone, aren't they? Trying to turn, but the song comes through. It comes off immediately. They say, we can fight this. Mushi, as he tells Jabs to shut it. the heck up. We're fighting here, my friend. No time for singing and dancing. We're killing. Game-winning vision, right? That's what we've been talking about a lot in this tournament, too, is these type of wards. Just seeing these rotations down. Absolutely perfect. 1k gold lead now for Mineski, as well as a 1k experience. Still very close, but now top again, looking Ooh. for Chalice. Wait, come by. They even had the Ice Blast coming in for good measure. Sort of the second player in a matter of a minute from bottom lane to top lane, making a big impact with that blink pickup. The power of Tiny. And he's already looking for his next play. He's also going to have Empower in majority of these instances too, so he can farm, but also that extra damage that's going to be dished out. Oh, Thomas. Thomas. He is going to try for this, but there was Ice Slice Ice there as well. Still looks for it, but the RP comes in Somnus. That ain't going to work. I guess he did not expect Ice to be behind Moon, but that was a very greedy attempt at a play that made him fall flat on his face. It cost X Nova's life as well. It was hovering around behind him. That's a big mistake there. That was... The greed did not pay off. He wanted to go for the styling, but he ends up getting styled on. Maneski instantly in with the counterplay, and now they've got the push onto the tier one mid. You almost feel like he could have just maybe Requiem from the start, but yeah, like you said, he didn't expect to have Ice 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 right behind there. It, yeah, absolutely. It looked like he was going to do that. Just go yep. for the Requiem and hope for the walk up. And that would have probably been the cleaner play, but we see he gets punished for it now. Y rolling in, but Moon just turns with the combo. FY, he's going to get taken down, cool down. But Mushi helps them find the kill. As Mineski are getting some serious lead now. 13 for 3, 3k advantage still. Arme is at the top, but the three cores of Mineski making the plays happen. And Ice 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 has pretty much got that blink. It's going to give them a lot of avenues to be able to fight into that rush, because as we've seen time and time again, Especially from a draft like this. Underlord in particular, but Troll and SF, you know LGD wants to make their way into that Roche pit. So we're going to see some, some Dominators down, dancing around that pit. The pit and now is look at bottom. Oh, in the jungle. Who they found? Moon in with the combo. Ice Blast as well. Somnus, he's by a shrine, but no heals will help him whilst the Ice Blast is upon him. Accepts his death. This LGD tiny. starting to starting to crumble a bit here. Up top, Boogie. Trying to speed himself away here with the Vortex. The glimpse is there, though. Nova has the control. Up down the snow. Snow cone. Ice Ice. RP will be back in 10 seconds. Level 2 RP as well. Somnus is 0, 4, and 0 in this game so far. Having a very hard time versus all this burst damage. For this already, Moon. He wants to kick something off. The snowball's coming out. A quick glimpse from X Nova. Will pull Moon away from LGD. But it really does see the, see the tiny play. We saw game one, Somnus, he had an amazing time. This game two, it's Moon's turn to, to sort of take the spotlight on the tiny. Yeah, 6 0 4 on him, too. He's so doing it. All of his rotations have been working. Mushi as well, 5 1 and 4. They're the heavy lifters for this team at the moment, and it seems like for LGD, the heavy lifters really going to have to be Ame. Already with Treads S and Y and that Morbid Mask, really going to need that BKB, though, as we've been seeing. We have seen it before here in uh, LGD Games Army and being able to the, pull it first to Tiny. Look at the pit right now. Control the side. Alpha Wolf and the Siege Creep. They're battling. Oh, this is this is hype. <laughs> Mushi's going to come in a bit. That's a bit unfair, really. Fair advantage there for Carty. Mineski on the prowl, though. Continuing this aggression with the Tiny. FY. He wants some more. In he goes. Quick combo. Goodbye, FY. Sending for, you know, just a, just a casual 300 on the Tiny with that Empower. Really that extra bit of potency to the combo that is pretty much impossible for any of LGD's heroes to survive through if they get jumped upon. Snova not able to find the glimpse there. And LGD, they're really put on the back foot here. They're now just having to, they're just trying to force waves out constantly with Chalice, looking for these pickoffs. But Mineski, they're not giving them the opportunities. And look at top, they could even try to go for X Nova here. Is there a certain fear of 
any time that LGD show themselves in the lanes. Moon will be moving around hunting for those pickoffs. Over. Is it safe? Keeps himself back behind the tower. Shadowblade, of course, will be the next item for Moon as he knows that this is this is the way to play this game. Just constantly keep on the active, getting around the map and catching LGD's heroes off guard. And Mushi now already has the BKB too. Mineski hitting some very crucial item timings very early in the game. And there we go, back into the pit. Dominated creeps go. The Bull Assassin. <laughs> I like how the, this is just Dota now, the Dominator sitting in the pit. I think I've seen it like six games now in a row. Really is incredibly valuable information. <laughs> Said especially in a game with the two lineups that we have here. Yeah. Mushi. Looks like this is a, a bait attempt here with that BKB available. LGD, they, they've got the read though. They move away. Chalice now continuing to force out bottom. They don't see anything. They don't see anyone on the map either. And now Ooh. they quickly blink into the pit, making that bull look like a bull. Oh, mate, as you say, it really feels like for LGD, it's about waiting for the BKB on the troll. Then maybe they can both. try and find some fights themselves. I or think maybe even both BKBs, the troll okay. as well as the shadow fiend. Chalice is starting to get some item timings here. Has the hood as well as that dominator finished up. He's pretty much just been playing around bottom the whole game. But Mineski, they're they're looking to punish. LGD while they're split up, forcing these lanes out constantly. Be another tier two here, the 20 minute mark. Fortification does come out from LGD, but Nesky. No fear at the moment, knowing that they have this comfortable lead and advantage, and that they have forced LGD into a position where LGD are very scared about taking these head on engagements. Take these towers. And I'll see if they can maybe catch someone towards the mid lane if LGD do send anybody out of there. More deep words coming out from Ineski, trying to keep that pressure up. Since they know, they know LGD is just playing the farm game for those BKBs at the time, for the time being. Mushi goes bottom, instantly jabs TPs behind him, just in case there is going to be a play happening. And now the game, the game does slow down, and it gets, it gets a little bit hard for LGD, because with their lineup, they want to be trying to find pickoffs with the glimpse, but the window's closed a bit here, especially versus the Gyrocopter, because of that early BKB purchase. Same thing for Somnus. He can't go for that Eul's play anymore. No. He hasn't gotten a single opportunity for it, actually. Do his hide in the in the trees down bottom. Mineski, with this ward vision, they saw the path that LGD's taking to the Ancients. See if they can find the, the setup. Eve for Ice, Ice, Ice or Moon looking to get in on the front. Moon, and they find a good opportunity here, and indeed he does straight Gets in both. with the double kill. Instant jump, instant play from Moon. Mm. As Maneski, play after play, pick off after pick off. Now they're into the pit. Two heroes down on LGD. See if LGD have any sort of chance to get over and contest, but it's going to be so hard, especially with Maneski having such a, a fantastic lineup to fight around the pit with the, the Song of the Siren, the RP. A very hard thing for LGD to slow down. It won't be the quickest of Roches from Maneski, and so Maneski are a little bit scared. The supports respond. So uh, Disruptor, one of the better heroes around pit two. Oh, they want to find a pick off first. You can see the line being drawn. Mm -hmm. Moon leading the way with this newly found Shadow Blade. See what he can catch. Got the high ground here at the moment, Maneski. LGD dropped down a low ground ward. Each creep very slowly taking out that sentry ward. Five more hits. Giving it his all. One more. Him, so they've got BKB now on Shadow Fiend. Troll Warlord almost as well, now with the DD. Let's take some of these Ancients here from Nesky just to double stack. Nesky placing more uh, Roche Wards. Watch that opposite side. LGD all playing as a unit. Now the BKB is coming out. This could be where they look to take a fight with those two BKBs as well as the pipe finished on Underlord. Who are you trying to catch out if you're LGD when you're making these moves? Is there someone that you want to start the fight on? It depends on whoever's looking out of position. Moon? Be far up here, but uh, a little bit scared of going in. Now they've actually got the BKBs in their hands. It's pretty hard for them to really bring down the gyro, so I think 
anybody but the gyrocopter is pretty good kills because if the gy the gyro you look at their lineup they don't have that like, great that control through the BKB it's just really the tusk and if the troll warlord can get on top and with this smoke can they catch anyone? Go. Jabs. Let's see what they can find. Jabs is right by the shrine. They've got the Yule set up. Moon comes in with the avalanche for the side pine. Jabs on top of the snowballs in the loot. Trying to push. They've got the control. They're fighting by a shrine. This is a huge mistake for LGD surely as they've lost two aren't they? He's trying to man fight up against them but he can't quite bring down Mushi. They've got the control onto him and LGD with the smoke and choke as they've lost three. Nova's being chased down as well as the missile from Mushi flies forward and they'll find themselves another Mineski. Not the play that LGD would hope for there with their newly picked up BKBs coming in like that and just forcing the fight too heavily handed by that shrine, Ice 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 instantly there to respond with the play. They didn't even get the BKB off on the Shadow Feed. He got caught before, and even if he did, probably gets brought down anyway from the Flak plus that RP. And this is what we talked about. This is why they wanted to pick that Magnus, to deal with those BKBs, to get that disable through them, to protect the Gyrocopter. Moon, he knows someone's around it. I mean, this base that Mineski have played this game at has been absolutely incredible. Yeah. And LGD... I Means oh. 21 to 5. 25 minutes, a 10k lead. Yeah. See this replay again. They come in, and I mean, it's Bias trying. They think that they can just go for the Naga Siren, but it's ever so deep, Fog. The snowball brings in two, and then Ice 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 from that right side just gets the perfect blink out. A lot of time, of, uh, a lot of duration of Arme's BKB being wasted there because of that RP, and he just can't quite kill off Mushi at this stage. As you said, this gyro a little too big for them to, to take down, and uh, I think as soon as that jump was made off the back of coming out of the smoke, LGD knew that they messed up. Yeah. Moon. It's close. It's only turning into a very difficult game here for LGD. Yeah, it's already an Eagle Song picked up for Mushi. So gonna have a pretty early butterfly for that evasion versus both Troll and SF. And their, their physical damage is pretty much only Troll at this time. Maybe is gonna get controlled for the most part in these game in these uh, team fights as the Shadow Fiend. So you see he's actually already going for a Blink and a Shiva's build too. So just doubling down on the magic damage. Looking very hard right now for LGD. Ame getting an Arcane. It's tiny, I mean. Each fight with the Empower Moon just doing so much damage. Yep. Always Keeps the farm up. Have a bit of a go on to Chalice <laughs> uh, as Chalice gets himself out of there. Now Mineski's gonna, they're, they're not really looking to force anything until they get their next big items. They're just huh? sitting back. They're like, all right, come at us. They can farm. We've got RP. We can farm. We've got Empower. Those guys is happy, chilling, and sitting back until he has the BKB as well. Dark Troll Summoner versus the Alpha Wolf. The, the matchup that we really all turned up today to see. <laughs> and yeah. uh, seeming to be quite unfairly matched up, really. Yeah, Alpha Wolf crits, man. It's not oh, fair. And in comes the Troll as he out-trolls the summoner of trolls. I'm pretty surprised, to be honest, that out, uh, that maybe he's going for the full magic build this game. I can understand it in some, but this time he has a troll warlord, right? So you want to be able to usually utilize the battle trance a bit. And I feel like he's going to be a bit limited, especially with the way that his... I mean, it's also because he didn't find any pickoffs from the Yules. So I think because of that, it's, it's just looking harder and harder for him. Fly for Mushi nearly complete. They're going to go for the smoke up Mineski as Mushi shows in lane. And maybe with that information being spread towards LGD, they can catch out LGD with the other four heroes. They have the RP. They have the catch. They've got the Troll Summoner leading the charge. The supports are farming together, FY. He may be the one to pay with his life as Moon comes in. Quick with the slap. No sort of glimpse is going to get that tiny away from FY soon enough. And Xnova, he'll pay as well. There'll be a buyback from FY, but Xnova will fall. Maneski continuing to get these grabs with these smoke rotations. PD rune spawns bottom. Ame has a hyperstone as well. So okay. maybe if they can isolate this, these cores, maybe if they can find the Magnus, they could look to try to take a fight, but still looking ever so hard for them. We've got to worry about that RP. Go towards mid lane, LGD. Trying for the play. Ice 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 is still on the high ground. Could look for an opportunity to jump in, and he will. It only catches out FY. 
They'll go with the Avalanche. They do manage to finish off the touch, but Arme indeed moving forward with the BKB, trying to fight back for the root. Coming through the magic community, they're holding down, and Mushi has the damage to pick him up. The song from Jabs as Mineski, they're setting up for more. They've got the vision onto both of them. There is a Dark Rift available. Is he going to get the chance to get it out? It doesn't look like it is. Chalice taken down by Mineski. Only Somnus and Exnova surviving. They just cannot catch a break, LGD. Maneski are just giving them no chance to turn this one around. LGD already looks like they're they're already like concerned with this game because you saw Somnus too. Somnus didn't even walk into that fight to try to dish any damage out. You saw they tried to space themselves too. Ame was like, alright, this RP's coming. FI only gets hit by it, but. He has to hold that BKB. He wanted to hold it for as long as possible because he knows if I BKB, I'm just getting netted. That's exactly what happens. Aaron is jabs every fight, just saving that net for, for the BKB troll. X Nova uses the Static Storm actually on the Creep Wave top, by the way. So they're just trying to push lanes in because of how ahead Mineski is at the moment. And LGD looking in a ton of trouble this game, getting further and further behind. In this replay again, you're gonna see. You're gonna see they like don't want to commit in. So Fy doesn't bring him in the snowball course. Fy or Ame staying in range for him, gets away from that RP. But look at Somnus. He's just standing and watching. He he's like he this. can't go in the fight, and then he gets hit by a flak. So his blink gets canceled too. If he did want to go for something, he's, he's out and of that's there. It. Yeah. This is not a fight he wants to take, and uh, is lucky enough to get the blink out off the back of the song. As he makes it out just in time, but as you saw, just no intention from Somnus to commit anything to that fight, as he knew straight away that once again this in this game two it was going to be another match, uh, another sort of fight between the two sides that it was just impossible for LGD to come out on top of. Mineski's had the ward advantage this entire game too. We've seen Ninja Boogie placing down these. I mean, this one's a bit more of a standard one here, but they had some other unorth unorthodox wards on the right side, and then this one closer to the base. Just being able to claim that vision, even putting one now in the base of LGD. He's been very sneaky on this AA. There you go. Ready for the high ground siege, Maneski. Up to the tier three tower. Bottom lane getting pushed in as well by Mushi. They are ready to really pressure LGD. They have the RP, the Song of the Siren, back up and available. Top lane arm eight does manage to get the split push onto a tier one tower, but his own tier threes are in trouble. Jabs is level 16 with a pipe and a medallion, too. So he's this reinforcing guard Moon. on this Naga Siren. He's coming in FY. We'll jump forward with the punch, the snowball. They're trying to slow down Maneski, but you see Moon just almost ignoring this task. If I just combos him down, finishes off the racks. Maneski cleaning up the bottom lane as LGD can seemingly do nothing. They continue to desperately try and push out the side, but Moon's in with the combo. Arme has to pop the BKB. Will turn with the help of Thomas. They do claim okay, the life Moon. of Moon. But Ice Ice Ice, he's coming in, jumps in with the RP, looks to hold down this troll wall of Somnus with the Yules hard trying to hold Ice 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 back. But Ice Ice Ice, he's got the BKB complete. He'll take it. down one, he'll look for a second, and indeed, LGD tap out. It is all too much for them in this game two, as Mineski strike back hard after losing game one with an incredible sense of power. 31 minutes, 29 to 6, 17k lead. It really was flawless stuff from Maneski this time out of the yep. laning stage. Both teams showing us their strong points so far this series. And it really does feel like this This tiny is probably, I mean, it's already that first seems pick, to but be the hero. it seems to be the hero, especially in these last two games. It's just been able to find so many pickups around the map. They tried for this Shadow Fiend, which does not have a great win rate here at this, at this tournament. I think it's like 20-something no. percent. Didn't end up working. The Yule's build didn't work either. And they're going to they're gonna have to think of something next to try to deal with Maneski when they've got these type of aggress aggressive heroes, aggressive lineup. Absolutely. The yeah, Somnus is Shadow Fiend finishing 1-6-1. One, and one. Yeah, A very hard game for him to play. And it always does feel like you are taking that risk when you go for sort of this Yule's Blink build. It's by, considered by a lot, it seems, as sort of a greedy build, a build that you go yeah. for when you feel that you can just outclass your opponents. But when LGD, they're in this matchup against Mineski, these two teams that are very evenly sort of leveled, it, it's, it seems like you just can't go for those greedy builds. Yeah, they, I mean, they just got ran at, and they, they weren't able to really respond. They were just kind of farming and trying to catch back up. Oh, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. No 3 0 sweeps today, that's for sure, in this best of five grand finals as it stands nice. one to one. Mineski securing the second game in style with an Ice 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 Magnus. Thank you very much, Jody Pixel and Fogged, bringing you, of course, the grand final. We'll return back to them for game number three. We're effectively down to a best of three. Both teams showing us their good stuff in the opening two games. Uh, pretty much how the panel predicted things.
we're going to go. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. I mean, yeah. I, I said it's going to be a very close series. And one, we are 1-1 one, one right now. Yeah. And the Ice 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 Magnus there. Once again, like, always really, really good performance on the hero. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you that surprised now with how Ice just picks out these heroes and then just plays incredible games? No, I, I forgot a couple of key things in that game. One was how dependent LGD's cores were on BKB. You saw the Naga net and the AA all mm -hmm. just negate the troll. Um, and Mag is the same thing. It's an old school hard counter to SF and troll. And Ice, Ice, Ice actually has played that hero a lot. Winter with the inside information, seeing both the hero and Maneski's victory coming. <laughs> but, I mean, it when the game plays out in front of you, you realize, oh, wait, LGD actually like can't ever fight them. And uh, the Mag Tiny with the Mag buff. Sorry, the Tiny and the Gyro with Magnus and Power. Like, it's so much damage. And their supports also add so much more control and damage and team fight in comparison to LGDs, which is where really just control and... It doesn't matter because that BKB troll, that BKB to SF, like they actually die anyway. Mm. You, you 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 get back the damage lost from the atrophy aura mm. from from the Magnus. So maybe that's a way they view uh, as dealing with uh, the underlord against the gyro matchup. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Uh, and Jack, uh, if there's a key hero so far in the grand final, it's the tiny. Yeah, we talked about it during the uh, MVP for the first game, right? Again, like a hero, the kind of unique skill set for uh, mids. Obviously, it has lane versatility as well, but uh, it's it's durable and it creates so much tempo for you. Um, helps you take towers a little bit as well if you're winning the fights. Um, this hero we've seen just just key so many t like TNC. It seems so crucial for them and Armel. It's just been a very important hero for this series. But uh, again, going back to kind of the three position matchups, right? In this case, you have that Underlord. It's been so stable, so versatile, uh, such a dangerous hero that you know, even teams like Liquid have banned the first phase, but then the offlaner ends up being answered by, by Mineski as a kind of big control, big team fight. A lot of synergy, and then this hero in the past was so popular because he, one of the reasons is he trades up for cores. Like with an RP, you're guaranteed, you're just about guaranteed to kill a two mm -hmm. or one position if you catch them at all, unless there's some other answer to him in the draft. And so uh, Ice Ice Ice, a lot of credit to Winter for seeing this pick and a lot of credit to Ice 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 for mm -hmm. playing it well as expected. Mm -hmm. has, he, has he been the best player in the tournament? It's arguable, arguable between maybe him, uh, maybe, maybe played well uh, the whole tournament. After watching that last series, I feel like it's yeah. maybe FY. Mm. I, I think FY has just been on fire, but I, I, I think Ice has been the best, at least very much the most consistent. There was this post on Reddit about how uh, asking the question. Oh, is you ice, were reading Reddit? <laughs> is Ice uh, for feedback and, you know, maybe yeah. some Didn't you say Red, 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 Reddit people don't know what they're saying? I didn't say which subreddit. I was on, <laughs> I was on NASCAR. But there was a question about how <laughs> Ice, Ice, Ice. Is he the m most talented player without a TI victory? Like, if you look back at the history, he's always mm. seemed to be a star on his teams, whatever role he was playing. And he he definitely appears to be the best offlaner in the mm. game at the I moment. I mean, I, I would agree with you, except that he spells esports with a capital S, and I just I think mean, that's against the rules. Yeah, so. but he does it on purpose, so it's Yeah, fine. he does it to troll me. Uh, anyway... Um, is there any other pick out for you guys for the MVP for this I mean, game? Moon for sure, this game. Moon? But I, I okay. think that might just be the tiny factor. And yeah. I don't know if I'll, we'll see this hero make it through for the rest of the event. But this is what makes BO5 mm. so special. You're talking about their own special meta. Like, this is it. All of a yep. sudden, tiny appears to be first pick or ban. Yep. And what will come through because of it. Yeah. I like the fact that we, as we go through these games, if we get there by game four or five, there will be too many heroes to ban first phase. <laughs> <laughs> compared to the first two or three games because they kind of figured it out as to what mm -hmm. they want to ban. But this man has picked up the MVP of game number two. It is Moon, a.k.a. Nana, and he will collect an MVP award for uh, this particular game. Um, Jack, moving on, LGD, how do they bounce back? Um, again, they, they have to have something prepared uh, in the draft. I think they've already adjusted with what they let through. Um, you know, having the Underlord available. Obviously, AA, which they first picked again in other series, um, including against uh, EG, that's, that's something else they have to consider as well. Um, mm. And then, again, this Tiny, because you don't, if you pick the Tiny counters early uh, or things that counter it maybe later in the game, just fighting one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't necessarily solve the problem of what this Tiny provides in the early mid-game. So it's not that easy of a hero to just counter with like a pick or two. Yeah, okay. We're going to get more from all three of our panelists very shortly, but we are headed to a break right now. We are at game number three next up with the draft ahead of us in this best of five grand final. It's LGD versus Maneski. Game three coming next. <laughs> 